In this lesson, we will learn how to simulate dust particles with the help of Maya's fluid emitter. To add extra icing on the cake to really sell this flight sequence, what we could do is have dust kick up as the aircraft starts to take off. I think that'll be a really nice touch. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and work with Maya's fluid emitter this time. I think you'll have a lot of fun setting up this system because it's going to give us some really great results and it doesn't require too much effort at all. So jumping back to our perspective view, well then, underneath the effects module, move to the fluids menu. And it will work with a 3D container. If we were to go to the option box, you're going to notice that the settings can be accessed from the attribute editor. So let's just go ahead and click on Apply and Close. Now where is the emitter? Well, let's go to our Show menu and make sure that Fluids is active. All right, fantastic. So there you have it. We have this small emitter to work with. If we were to hit Play now, you're not going to see anything. And simply because the emitter is way too small, let's go ahead and increase its size to about the size of our aircraft. Now, when we hit Play, you'll start to see some particles, which is great. But here's what's not so cool. You can see how they're playing back very slowly, and that's because of our play every frame setting. So what I like to do at this point is actually switch this back to our real-time playback, just so we can get a more accurate idea of the particle speed. So we'll go ahead and jump to our preferences, and underneath the time slider, let's go ahead and switch our playback speed to real-time 24 frames per second. And we'll now go ahead and click on Save. All right, fantastic. So now when we hit Play, it's going to cause the particles to be emitted closer to our frame rate speed. All right, nice. Now before we get any further, let's go to our Fluid node. This is the Transform node. This is what we would see here in the Outliner. Let's say we get this renamed so we can stay organized. So instead of Fluid 1, which is very generic, I'll remove the 1 and I'll add an underscore dust so we know exactly what this is used for. Once we hit Enter, the name has been set. All right, cool. Now, going back to the shape node of our fluid emitter, what we could do is start to improve the quality of the emission. Let's go to our base resolution. We'll want to increase this a bit more. I'd say 20 should work well for us. But mind you, if you really want a very realistic look, you'll want to increase this quite a bit. But as you start to do that, it will affect your performance here in your scene. So do be mindful of that. But I think that this value of 20 is going to work out really well. I find that 20 to 40 works great. Now, if we were to hit play, you'll notice that eventually the particles are going to be trapped by this boundary we have here. No worries. We can cause the particles to push past this boundary by doing a few things. We can go to our boundary settings, and we can go ahead and set each to none just to have them push past a bit more. And then if we were to scroll down until we find the Auto Resize section, here it is. If we expand this, we can enable Auto Resize. And this is fantastic because it's going to allow us to have the particle effect continue to grow. So it's not going to be trapped by that boundary any longer. And then you can increase your resolution for a more accurate simulation. Neat. But it still doesn't quite look like dust just yet. If we were to go ahead and jump to the fluid emitter itself, which we could also access from the attribute editor, take a look. We can go ahead and expand basic emitter attributes. And this is what we can use to increase our rate so we could start to have these push out a bit faster. So instead of 100, I'll go ahead and set the value to about 400. So now when we hit play, you'll notice that the particles are going to push out a bit faster. Also note that if you were to go back to the shape node, we can then go ahead and focus on the 
dynamic simulation drop down and here's where we'll find another property we can use to adjust our rate or the speed of the simulation so instead of one let's go ahead and set our simulation rate scale to about five so now when we hit play you'll notice that we're going to start getting a much better result right starting to look like dust or at least smoke kind of pushing out from the emitter all right sweet so this is looking great so far and I think that this would be a good stopping point so let's say we go ahead and enhance the look of our simulation in the following lesson